is here in the United States for the introduction of the fighters in this WBO Bantamweight Championship. We go once more to the center of the ring and the ring announcer, Thomas Driver. Thomas? Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues here at the UIC Pavilion in Chicago, Illinois with 12 rounds of boxing and it will be for the WBO Bantamweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by Warriors Boxing in association with All-Star Boxing, Producciones Deportivas, Box Promotions, and Showtime. Along with their great sponsor, Ficrea, Servicios Financieros. Sanctioned by the Illinois State Athletic Unit, along with the World Boxing Organization, President Francisco Valcarcel. Supervisor tonight, John Duggan. Our three judges scoring on a 10 point must system will be Bill Lurch, Dennis Nelson, and Michael Pernick. When the bell rings, our referee in charge, the third man in the ring will be Gino Rodriguez. Introducing to you first the challenger fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He's wearing red with gold and black and weighed in at 118 pounds. Coming to us from Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He brings a professional record consisting of 28 wins, 10 defeats, two draws, with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alejandro El Payasito Hernandez. And his opponent across the ring, he is the defending champion fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing white with pink and weighed in at 117 and a half pounds. Fighting out of Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico, by way of Tokyo, Japan. He is undefeated with 30 wins. 19 of his wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the reigning and defending WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, Tomoki El Mexicanito Gameda. Okay, guys. Hey, Mega. Hey, Mega. Campeón. Cameda. Trae, trae Cameda para acá. Dale para acá, dale para acá, dale para acá. Ok, caballeros. Te sirvieron sus instrucciones en calidad. Obedezcan mis instrucciones todo el tiempo. Protejan en todo el tiempo y suelte a los dos. taller and longer and if Fernandez wants to give himself even a chance to win he's gonna have to be the aggressor throw a ton of punches in this tiny ring the rules the unified rules no standing in no three knockdown rule only the ref can stop the fight the fighter can't be saved by the bell in any round but the fight becomes official after four rounds are complete Barrett. All right, with that, we are set to go. This for the WBO Bantamweight Championship, and even more importantly, I think for Kameda, a chance to really shine here in the United States. He was planning on moving from Mexico to Las Vegas, and he says, I want to be a superstar here in the United States. Not just a star, mind you, but a superstar. And he's got the goods. And I think he's got the clothing to yes, fans yes. in Las Vegas as well. I don't know who invented color television, but they had Tomoki Kamei in mind. <laughs> Absolutely. You have a pair of shirts like that. Right? I do. So far, uh, he's put on a good show at the beginning. The intern is... I like it. Well, his brother was on the card earlier tonight and uh, showed some great hand speed and a lot of talent in an easy win. You see his Tomoki can pick up where he left off. Yeah, one thing I just saw yeah, made up jamming from too far away. He has a habit of doing that. It's very dangerous because if his opponent steps in with the right hand, he can be clocked. Still doing it. Yeah, he's got to trust his instincts a little more when he gets close. 
on the other, Hernandez is pretty much a stationary target right now. Now he tries to jab his way in. Very tight defense by Hernandez, keeping his gloves up. Both of them shots are landing on Hernandez's gloves. He's a rugged veteran. I mean, this guy's the top of guy that made him, he's gotten better from his losses. And when I see that high guard of Hernandez, it reminds me of Hernandez's last fight when he took out Singu with a left hook to the body. That body, that right side of Hernandez's body is open to that left hook. Where he's got very quick hands to your side. Crank that left hook. Yeah, he's got a, like, an electrifying jab. I mean, he knows how to work it up and down. He's very relaxed in there. He's poised. He's taking his time. Well, he said he, he went to Mexico to try to learn the Mexican style of fighting. He doesn't really fight like so much like a Mexican fighter, though. But... No, I think he's more like a long-range fighter. And he uses uh, the speed, fights from the outside. But like I said, when he hurts you, he, he goes in for the kill. Yeah, good finisher. He's a good personality. He's got, he's got all the makings. I, I never remember a Japanese fighter becoming a real star in, in the West, but with TV exposure, if he can fight a higher quality of opposition, he can do it. Oh, oh, oh. And he's got a style that, that should be pleasing. Busy fighter. Quick, got a very quick smile. Go now. I'm going to go to the area. the area. I'm the area. No pierdas la concentración, no pierdas la concentración. 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 No pierdas Cuando lo tenga vivo. So come to round two. Hernandez just wants to be a little bit busier than he was. I think he allowed Kameda to just take that first round. to look for from Kameda. Right hand on top, bring her hand as his gloves up, step to the left, and kick that left hook into the bottom. As you said, he stopped his last opponent with a body shot. There was a left hand body. His last opponent, the Italian guy, seen you in the body. And that guy with the crippled left hook to the body. The whole fight, he was boxing from the outside. Uh, most of the time, jumped from the outside, and all of a sudden, he just landed that hook in. He stopped like the, here. You know, he's trying to make a statement. This is the second time in the U.S., and it, it seems like he's, he's coming a lot more forward, Steve. Yeah, than he was in the, in the, the fight against the time. More in the pocket, and part of that is the size of the ring as well. Because remember, this is a barely 16 foot ring. Yeah, this is as small a ring as I can remember. Judging by this round, Kameda does come forward as he's doing now. He very quickly moves Hernandez to the ropes. Also a real danger of a pass here, the way Kameda does come in when the money comes in. Kameda's not going to be able to give him anything that Hernandez has not seen. Yeah, he's a guy that's been able to do a Santa Cruz. He's, he's never been down Hernandez in, in how many 
40 fights. Oh, 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 no business fight on the outside. He needs to get him down in the trenches. I mean, it's just too elusive for him, too fast. He's not going to beat him that way from the outside. He needs to find a way to get in. Kameda is trying to make him lunge, you know, that's he's trying to make him lunge. I saw Fernandez lunge a couple of times with his lead right. Kind of right hand. Kameda yeah. there as Fernandez did step in. That was a good right hand. Kameda very quick hand. Again, an effective round, I think, for Tomoki Kameda. Cuando él ataca y no te puede hacer nada, when he attacks, se frustra. And he can't do anything, he ya no sabe qué hacer. He doesn't Entonces, know what to do. Nosotros. So then that's when we go in. How do we go in? Pero By atacando, moving forward, ¿sí? giving him some way, Vamos a atacar con inteligencia. Cuando We're going to work with intelligence. Se frustra, se queda parado. Está, está, But don't está stay, pensando, stand it up. Pero no hay que dejarlo pensar. He's ¿sí? thinking, but don't let him think. Sí. Nada más que no quiero que te me salgas para atrás. Don't, don't go back. Estuvo muy bien lo que hiciste ahí. No quiso Stay nada. Esa es la clave. Esa es la táctica. That's the key. Va, entra loco. No te da. Se desespera. Entramos con la velocidad. Then you go inside. Go inside. Quiero golpe al cuerpo, hermano. He needs to stay in the pocket. There's no room. I mean, like I said, he can't fight from the outside. This is round three. Scheduled for 12 rounds, of course, because this is a title shot. Kameda stepping in a little closer here, really fighting Hernandez's fight. There he is. I think uh, Kameda needs to back up a little bit. Oh, go, go, go. Just uh, set traps oh, go, go, go. for ah. Hernandez. Try to land the right upper, then the left one to the body. Turn him, once he lands that right upper cut, give him a little angle and try to land with that left hook, which he's open for, like Steve said. Sense of urgency for him. This is his third try in the world title. He fought at 112, couldn't win it. Fought at 115, fought for a draw. Even with all the titles you have to choose from these days, getting three or four title fights is not that easy. No, it's not. That's why I win one. So, this might be his last shot. Good shot to buy again by Canelo. He's doing him a favor by closing the gap that Hernandez should be trying to close. But he's real patient. He's just sitting outside from the pocket. They wanted him to be patient in the corner, but I think he's overdoing it. I mean, you got to be stay in the pocket, get a little fast, get some movement, move forward. There is a And he's backing up straight again, Hernandez. They don't want him doing that in the corner.
December 12th, the American dream heiress Landy Lara returns to take on former light middleweight champ Ishe Smith. Lara vs. Smith, Friday, December 12th at 10.15 p.m. Only on Showtime and Showtime Anytime. Showtime Championship Boxing returns with an electrifying triple header. Headlined by Amir Khan versus Devin Alexander, plus Keith Thurman and Demetrius Andrade. Khan versus Alexander, Saturday, December 13th, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on Showtime and Showtime Anytime. Back to back nights of boxing on Showtime, December the 12th, the 13th. A little Christmas present, a little holiday present Absolutely. for everybody. Good cards. Ishe Smith, one of the Showbox favorites, will challenge Eris Landy Lara. Lara's first fight since uh, that close decision loss, a controversial decision loss to Canelo. In San Antonio, great fight town. We'll be doing that, and then the next night, can't wait for those fights. Amir Khan, Devin Alexander is a very critical fight at 147. Return of Thurman, can't wait to see him again. It's the fourth round. Pomeda and Hernandez. And again, Pomeda starts out in close quarters and gets there a couple of shots. Now they're just hand to hand, and this is not Pomeda's choice. Hernandez wants to fight, but Kameda's getting the better of him. So, I mean, that's Hernandez is fighting, but you, you're right. He just, he's not busy enough. I don't know if he doesn't want to take any risks. Look, there he is. He's, he's covering up very well. Frame defense. Nothing's getting in, really. Kameda needs to look for openings, too. He needs to uh, throw up because down the middle and open up that guard. And you see the power punch is thrown. Hernandez, interestingly, we, with a... Uh, 34 punch advantage, but look at the percentage level, 17 percent compared to almost 50 percent for Kameda. That's why Kameda's winning the fight. Good body shots from Kameda. He did take a left hand from Hernandez. Right there. Now we've all talked about Kameda's hand speed and foot speed. That hand speed enables him to throw three, four punches at a time. Generally speaking, Hernandez answers with only one. Up is almost enough to win the fight. I'm still giving Hernandez the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he'll step it up after round six, but I'll tell you what, if he doesn't step it up, he's just going to settle for that. I mean, maybe he's just happy to go for a round with the matter. We'll, we'll be able to tell after the sixth, seventh round if he doesn't pick up the pace. Because he, he just covered it up. He throws single shots. Good shot to put a good chin. Neither man's been hurt in this fight. He just switched to Southport briefly earlier in the round. He does that on the so We asked him if he was going to do that in this fight. He said, I don't know. Right. He didn't yeah. tell us if he was going to work. That's a little angle there. Lead by Kameda. Gave him an angle. Came back, but he missed. He needs to do more of that. That's the way you're going to set traps. Just missed from Kamada. Oh, they just continuing to pick the punches of Kamada. Oh, There's a call in the gloves. But again, just in case of Kamada is doing more. He's doing more and throwing most of them back and Hernandez up. Close quarters, and again, this is by Kameda's choice. 
And even in close quarters, it's Kameda that's getting the best of Good body shot from Kameda with two shots to the head. With a swirl on the left eye of I think this is the fight that Hernandez wants. Not taking advantage of it. Kamea might just be too strong for him. On top of being too fast. He has a very quick shot, Jack. Kamea sets up a little too far away. He's content to stop his forward movement when he sets up. And he's, he's too far away to reach his opponent. So if he doesn't step in with the jab, he's not going to land. So he keeps touching them there with the jab, but they're not solid jabs. I think Camilo should try to change uh, the style of the plan of uh, this fight. You know, the first fight, Razafar has been attacking. He turns it up and let, let uh, set trap for him and let uh, uh, Hernandez come forward, you know. Bait him in. Bait him in. Run, you know, stay away from him. Try to catch him coming in. Although he's winning that way. Yeah, he's winning that way, but... Maybe get a knockout. Yeah, he's going Exactly, yeah. He's got to look for the knockout. He wants to win in press. He's, this guy's hungry to be a big star in the U.S. And, and the knockout, that, that goes a long way. He's going to it's got to be in the back of his mind. But it makes it difficult because if Hernandez just goes into a survival mode, and when the guy goes into survival mode, he's trying to just be there as a puncher back. It makes it a lot harder, harder out there to get him out of this. Yeah, as you said, he's taking the fight to Hernandez. If he thought he was going to the other way, he had to be. It's a serious challenge for Hernandez to score a knockout because, again, Hernandez, 40 fights, never down. Stopped only once. But Leo Santa Cruz in a fight where Hernandez said he hurt his right elbow. So, this is a tough guy. see middleweight contender Caleb Truex take another step toward a hope for title shot. He defeated Scott Sigmund, who was out man, came in here with a 24-5 record, but this one was really never in doubt. Truex just had one of those do what you have to do to win kind of fights, and he wound up with an eighth round stoppage over the overmatched Sigmund. So Truex moves on in the middleweight division, runs his record to 26, 1, and 2, and remember the name, he'll be heard from. a name for themselves tonight. Looking at one right here in Tomoka Kameda. I don't know if we've already mentioned it, but the Kameda brothers, Daiki, Tomoki, and Koki, the only trio of brothers in boxing history to all have won a version of a world title. And for four months, a couple years back, they held those titles simultaneously. Pretty yeah. amazing. That is amazing. Koki was on this card earlier tonight. was very impressive in a win, but also over and over matched the opponent. Right up. In Japan, Koki Kameda was basically Elvis, Michael Jackson, and the Beatles rolled into one. That's how big a star he was. Now, Smokey, of course, is not because he came to Mexico when he was 15. Wait, you see the total number of power punches per round. This is why it's been an easy fight to score. This is a running total. Kameda with an advantage, a fairly significant advantage. In every round. That's why I have to fight 5 0. Rounds 53 5 It's pretty hard to see it any other way, I would think. I totally agree. Right, right. 
percentage is 48 percent for Kameda, only 16 percent for Hernandez and he's not a big enough puncher to take advantage of landing 16 percent of his power shots okay we see Kameda. i mean Kameda needs to uh, find a way to get this guy out of there he's controlling the whole fight he needs to change up his style a little bit for hernandez he needs to get in the pocket close the pocket let his punches go he hasn't let his punches go he's got to let him go We'll see if he can give us any different, anything different here as we move along to round seven. It has been a dominant performance thus far for Tomoki Kameda, even though neither man in this fight has been hurt. There no knockdowns. Every round has looked pretty much the same as the one prior. And again, Kameda starts out in very close quarters. He started the last three rounds this way. punches in there, but Kameda throws everything in combination. Kameda seems to turn his body, his hips more on the inside when he punches than Hernandez does. Hernandez kind of arm punches. Kameda tried to work the body here. That was his key to success his last time. We're in the second half of the fight, guys. If Fernandez doesn't turn it up <laughs> right now, he's, he's not going uh, to win. I don't think he's going to win. Steve, I don't think he's going to happen. Yeah, it probably would have happened already if he was going to happen, right? I mean, they try to motivate him. You've got mo good motivators in the corner. They're telling him the right things to do. But this guy doesn't want to take any risks. I think he's going to settle for it. Going to decision. I think he's, which trying, has. I think he's trying a little bit more at this round. But again, the best shots are being thrown by Kameda. Even when Hernandez does throw combinations, Kameda's punches are better. Yeah, how do you land Hernandez? Lands three or good shots, like you step said, Barry, but then he backs up. Moved to Mexico in 
Mexico, age 15, fluent, of course, in Japanese, also fluent in Spanish. Learning to speak English now, has a few words in English. Speaks very well Spanish, though. That should go a long way in the, in the boxing world. Yeah, very marketable guy, but... He wants to be a big star. I think he, he you know, knockout will be great for him. Not putting him down. He's doing everything he can to win. He's winning the fight. He's dominating this fight. Yeah, the idea he's looking for. Yeah, took a left hand from Hernandez there. And it's just more experience. It takes experience, you know. And we know that the, the, the fighters that are ready to make the changes during the fight. I, I keep saying he's got to back up and let him come in. Set traps. Bait him in. Well, still to come, our main event, you get a look right now at Andrew Fafara. He is the local favorite, of course, and he will have everybody in his building rooting for him. Came from Warsaw, Poland, just outside Warsaw, Poland. And plenty, a huge Polish population here. Not so for Dudu and Gugu. He made his way to France from the Republic of Congo at the age of 15 years. Came there really to play football. He didn't think about boxing. Finally started boxing at 18. This is the second time he's been the United, in the United States. He was the wild card dream of Freddie Roach for a short period of time. But to say that he's excited about this opportunity is to make an <laughs> understatement. Very excited. He's been around the world. And this is his big chance. He watches Showtime. He watches Homeland. That's right. And we promised him a part in Homeland if yeah, he wins. Yeah, I did, which is probably going to cost me my job no if he problem. wins. But that's all right. I'll tell him I was just kidding. <laughs> Guys, 74 punches thrown by Hernandez in round seven, the most in the fight. Only landed 15, but it was a close round in terms of connect, 17 to 15 for Kameda. Closest yet. Yeah, you can tell Hernandez is, is trying to get on the gas here, but has not figured out the mystery in front of him. Yeah, I mean, all, all Hernandez is showing to me is, he's, you know, he's a, a young veteran that has been in tough situations because of the high caliber fighters that he fought. And, you know, the, the rounds have given him experience and, you know, they're quality rounds for him, and that's why he, you know, he hasn't been knocked out yet by a commander. Been a pro for a long time, turned pro at 15 years of age. They both turned pro young, 15 and 60 for a commander. His nickname is Mexicanito. El Mexicanito. Let me get the pronunciation. I should let Raul handle it. El Mexicanito, yes. Which Hernandez didn't like, but he feels that he's still trying to win over the, the Mexican fans. I don't blame him. Hernandez is a payasito. <laughs> Little time. And you see that in round seven, it was the closest yet in terms of connects. Still around, I gave Kameda I had to shut out. And he has a slight edge in the right card here in round eight. We're going 12. This is for the WBO Bantamweight Championship of the World. And uh, this fight has been pretty much one note ever since the opening bell. This round, Kameda using the ring a little bit, moving around. And then there's a little more aggressive. See, I like to see Kameda like that on his toes. And his toes, long jab. Bait him in. Come on. Three good jumps by the Hotel here. Yeah, that's it. That's good movement. Good lateral movement. Snap that jab. Well, what he's showing, by all I think, is that he can win this, these rounds any way he chooses. Whatever, whatever method he uses. <laughs> yes. Box, punch, aggressive, not aggressive. Yeah, winning this one completely with a jab. And maybe starting to frustrate him a little bit. It's got Hernandez coming forward a little bit. And muggy. Uh huh. Get up, get up. But if he's going to move around the ring and then hold when Hernandez gets uh, close, I'd rather see him be the aggressive. doesn't have an answer, no matter what Kameda does. 
pero no quiero que te avientes. Igual como quedamos, él empieza a correr de aquí y de acá, pero no te vayas de frente. Inteligente, ¿Sí? bien vivo, bien vivo, mi Alex. ¿Cómo estás, Alex? ¿Cómo estás, Alex? ¿Cómo estás, Alex? ¿Qué round viene? ¿Qué round viene? Sí, a toda madre, eso es lo que yo quería, carnalito, que te faltaran. Entonces, son los rounds de la pelea de campeonato, ¿eh? Son los rounds de la pelea de campeonato, ¿eh? ¿Qué me dijiste ahorita? ¿Qué te acabo de decir? ¿Qué dijiste? Voy a ganar. ¿Cómo va a ganar, güey? A huevo, a huevo. Entonces vamos a presionarlo, pero con inteligencia. No quiere nada, pero no quiero que te avientes. Bien cerradito. Y como le chita al final, no lo persiga. Que él venga. Cuatro rounds de campeonato, Alex. Rounds, championship rounds, he's saying. Well, they are that. Let's see if we can figure out some way to get inside of Kamehameha. Of his power shots. And that was just slipping an uppercut just a moment ago. And then waving his hand and wants Hernandez to come in. Hernandez again got the right uppercut. Not a huge punch, but. More activity there by Hernandez. Look it up, look it up, look it up. There's a cut. Yeah, they said in the Hernandez corner, you cut him already. On uh, left eye, I believe. Of Kamehameha, yes. Yeah, there was some swelling there earlier in the fight. Now a single line of blood, and he is blinking, so it's clearly bothering him. That eye is closing quickly, too. He's never been cut, Kamehameha. Never cut in 34 fights. Let's see how that affects this young guy. He's young. He's never, he's never been cut. Skin in your eye. Let's see how he takes that. Some guys, you know, they get cut by small little cut. They get lost. They don't know what to do. They lose concentration. So his activity has slowed, for sure. Yeah, he has. not good, but it'll, it'll take a knockout by Hernandez, and Hernandez jumps him and does get there with a couple of shots. Hernandez, part of the expression, smelling blood. <laughs> this might be Hernandez's uh, first round that he wins. <laughs> and Hernandez now barking at Hernandez to come. So this is no time for Hernandez to raise his gloves and play defense. He's got to attack. Forget counter punching. He's got to push Kamehameha back and attack. And Kamehameha with about eight punches there, none of them got there. And Hernandez reminds him of that. A round that so far was Hernandez. I think Kamehameha might have gotten hurt. He I think his eye is closing up too. It is. Yeah, they got some work to do. All right. But now it's up to Hernandez to take it. That's part of the entourage of Kameda. You can see that cut right in the wood. It is the kind of cut where blood would get It's not a bad cut, but just the area that it's in, it, it's going to drip in your eye. Blind you a little bit. Well, as Raul and Barry both mentioned, the best round of the fight for Hernandez. Watch as he lands a right hand here. You'll see Kameda, who's already cut. Wiping the blood. I mean, that's, that's telling your opponent, I'm troubled by this. And I'm not saying he can help but doing it, but... And Hernandez should take advantage of that, of course. Yeah. Don't talk, don't pose. 
Only 33 punches thrown by Kameda. Been ran high. Low for the fight. And you would have to think Hernandez is going to have to get him out of there to win the fight. And you would hope the corner would know that, though, because you're 100% right. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And, and I see Hernandez still in a somewhat defensive posture here. Yeah. Yeah, right now, this is all about Kameda. Well, we made a good point. He's a young fighter. He's only 23 years old. Never been cut before. How does he respond? I think he's bothering him. He's bothering him. What happens if Hernandez had more power and had, was more determined to put that pressure on him? You know, the type of fight that's going to be in your face. That's just, you know, that's things that he's going to learn. Kameda's going to have to learn him for the future. And Hernandez likes switching to southpaw. It might be a good time to do that because yeah. he can stick that jab Absolutely. on the left side of Kameda's face and make that cut worse. Still a lot more posing and punching by Hernandez. They're all for Kameda right now. He's very happy to. He starts to bleed again. Kameda is not taking advantage of a little bit of momentum he built in round nine. Yeah, he completely slowed down in this round. Yeah. He had a real good momentum going. Just to open up that cut again. Make the bleed again. You know, hey, get a little bit dirty. Tomatoes punch out to way, way down. 23 year old Rex coming handy. Yeah, I have some. Episode of the six-time Emmy Award-winning Showtime Original Series, Homeland. And what does this mean, Saul never got on the plane? There's no safe way to get you out of here. We are eyes on three vehicles. There wouldn't be an operation if it weren't for me. So don't treat me like I'm the enemy. Arm. Marking target. What the fuck? Take the shot, goddammit, murder your brains! Homeland, tomorrow at 9, only on Showtime and Showtime Anytime. And there are some fans going full stop. <laughs> they are here and I'm waiting for their man. Andrew Fontana, he will be in our main event. They're on hand. We've got another six minutes of boxing here, and we'll see if Hernandez can take advantage of the cut over the left eye of Tomoki Kameda. Kameda comes out winning. And winning rounds, as we said, is not going to be enough for Hernandez. He's going to have to go out there and get it. Yeah, that's 
really made the biggest difference in the fight. championship. And you saw Kameda back off there. He backed off like he might have been hurt. Yeah, he stopped him in his tracks. Hit him again. He's, he's landing with that left hook. Kameda holding on a little bit. One of the first times I've seen him do that in this fight. Oh, no, no, he, caused, he caused his own problem by coming out like he wanted to score a knockout here in the 12th. As if he's saying the I do that, I'm letting it all go. Down. That's the second time he's looked down at his feet. Yeah, he got it. Backed off very quickly. Now, why, why didn't Hernandez do this? Maybe five or at least five rounds back. I mean, come on, guys. Yeah. You're right, Raul. You're 100% right. It's working. Picked up the activity rate. He's coming forward. He looks like he wants to win. Maybe we need a 15 round fight. I don't know. <laughs> Clearly, both guys came in here ready to go 12 rounds. Still some gas in the tank, I believe, for both men. The battle, I would say this has not been an eye-opening performance for Pineda, but largely because his eye was closed. He changed his approach to the fight, for sure. Yeah, I think it did. I think you have to sit back and say, was this, does this fall in the category of impressive performance? And I'm not sure you can say that. No, but uh, he's fighting the guy who's never been down, never been stopped on the watch because of an injury. Got to take that into consideration. Yeah, great dude. I mean, this is a great learning experience for Tomato. 
I learned a lot from this fight. I mean, he go, 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 go. got tested in this round. Got caught for the first time. That was bothering him a little bit. He got stabbed a couple of times. He's right back on him. Running out of time now, though, as we head down to a quarter seconds remaining here in the final round. He's got his eye in. He's pretty much shut now. decision. Thomas? Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards, and we have a split decision. <laughs> Judge Dennis Nelson scores it 115 to 113 in favor of Hernandez. Judge Michael Pernick scores it 115 to 113 in favor of Kameda. And Judge Bill Lurch scores it 115 to 113 in favor of your winner. And still, WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, Tomoki El Mexicani. So there is your winner, Tomoki Kameda, and uh, all three judges had that fight a lot closer, Raul, than the three of us at this table. Yeah, I, I just gave Hernandez uh, maybe two rounds at the most on my scorecard. I think he did, uh, Kameda dominated the, the, the fight, and he, he did enough to win unanimously on my part. I agree 100%. I mean, a couple of rounds maybe for Hernandez, and that's it. He wasn't busy enough. He landed a low percentage of his power shots, and uh, at times, Kameda didn't do a lot himself, but landed a lot more punches for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very surprising. I'm, oftentimes, you can sit back and make a case, but even looking at these numbers, it makes no case. Yeah, the uh, number of power shots and the number of total punches landed much higher for Kameda and Hernandez, 22% of his power shots. I, I really don't understand what the judges saw, and those are a couple of, uh, Michael Pernick, one of the most respected judges in all of boxing. I'm very surprised uh, at the closeness of the scores. 
Yeah, I am too. And uh, Raul, every now and then, judges see a fight in a very different way than we do. We're all sitting ringside, uh, and there are the three judges. And I, I, you can't criticize the judges. They all saw it the same way, and we all saw it very different. I mean, uh, you know, the judges are in a different position than from what we are, so they see it at a different angle. But come on, guys. I mean, I think you could see this fight from any angle. And uh, the, the guy was, you know, it's... There's no way. There's no way that uh, Hernandez got all them rounds. And just to give you an idea of the experience of these judges, Bill Lurch, who's a local judge, 32 years of judging. Denny Nelson, 42 years of judging from Minnesota. And Michael Pernick from Florida, 22 years of judging. So these are veteran officials who saw this fight very close. I learned one thing tonight. Never say you need a knockout to win the fight. And I should have learned that years ago. But nonetheless, the guy that uh, everybody thought was going to win the fight, and we thought won the fight lopsided, won the fight. Tomoki Kaneda will move on and uh, very likely will have a title shot in his near future. Our main event is coming up next. Andre Fokara, originally from Poland, facing Dudu Ngumbu in front of what's expected to be a very pro-Polish crowd. But first, we want to remind you that Tuesday night is sports night on Showtime.